Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome all of you to the Skills Future Month in collaboration with Smart Nation 2021, organized by Skills Future Singapore and Smart Nation Singapore. Our speakers, Zane and Viola, will be sharing the topic Introduction to Search Engine Optimization SEO. Throughout the session, please feel free to post your questions in the QA tab that you see on the right panel. Do take note, questions will be moderated. Zane and Viola, please go ahead. Thank you, Celestine, for the introduction. Um, so my name is Zin. I will be one of uh, the team who presents to you today the introduction to SEO. I'm the head of the room at Group M, and I am with Viola. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Viola. I lead the SEO team at Group M Singapore. Thank you, Viola. <clears throat> So we will go through. Uh, we will go through um, our presentation today for um, now for SEO. The point is to make everybody at least or at least familiar with this topic that was long dedicated only to technical teams. There is no reason for that. There is a lot of growing interest from brands to SEO specialists when the, the, since the pandemic started because people understand the importance of their image, of their authority, of their visibility, and SEO allows to do that. Next one, please. So yeah, just a quick snapshot who, on who we are. Uh, Group M is the largest media company in the world. 134,000 employees worldwide in 112 countries. We are talking about 4 billion, for example, revenue on Q3 for uh, 2018, and the numbers are more in 2019 and 20. We are specialized in everything related to advertising, public relations, media, markets, research networks on and offline. Next. So today's agenda, what we will be able to know at the end of the session is three main points. Understand how search engines, <clears throat> understand how search engines is, uh, sorry, understand how search engines work, explain the key elements in SEO and review the content systematically by its on page element. We will, what we will uh, cover is develop the growth mindset for SEO. It means to understand um, it's to understand if there is a specific. Um, it's to understand if there is a specific need to understand the uh, main points of SEO, how the search engine works. Because when we have a request or a query on search engine, there is a lot of things happening behind. To get started on SEO, the best times to engage in SEO, the key data to understand on our SEO. And finally, what goes in SEO projects and the summary of key points. Next. So starting by understanding SEO, or understanding search in general, sorry. As you can see, a back region is one of the highest internet growth rates over the next five years. In 2019, we had 360 million. Uh, we had 360 million um, research uh, in SEA, and we are expected to have 400. We had 400 million in 2020, and it's expected to grow on the coming four years. Of course, uh, every, all the businesses that moved from online to offline, from offline to online, helped on that. But all in all, we are some key numbers. To show on that is that, for example, we have Philippines and Vietnam who are leading the region, um, and we have around a hundred, uh, and we have around um, seventy percent of the population is now online. The hourly internet use is getting higher and higher, and the internet, the internet economies in all what we call used to call emerging countries, like emerging countries, sorry, like. Uh, Malaysia, like Singapore, and so on. They are so much more active today, and they have more presence. Next. So the consumer search behavior, it means that the consumers today, they go to search engines as a first reflex when they want to look for an information. This information, it can be related to a product, it can be related to an information, it can be re related to any subject on which they want to use. According to Google, there are 167 billion Google searches are conducted per month. 71% of consumers use a search engine as a first step to discover a product. Just to tell you how much important, how it is important to, um, to be present on both paid and organic. And as you can see on the right side, the organic 
part of the search is important. And when we say organic, we say SEO, and we will explain this more later. Next. So role of organic search. First of all, it's to ensure the visibility of the website and search on different touch points, on the website, on the results, on the publishers, on the influencers, on the apps. There is SEO everywhere. There is always a ranking. There is always a top result. There is always a first page of results and there is always a second page of results and so on. So the objective is to be as visible as possible, whenever possible, when it's possible, at the top of the results, when we remove the paid part, of course. 40% of the journeys are organic, which is logical as the paid media is small, and 60 to 70% of the search clicks are organic clicks, because simply we will see in the next, in the next slides that the organic or the paid media space is small, there is a big competition on it, so the rest of the results are organic. And finally, it's content. When we say content, we say SEO. We say SEO because content is optimized through SEO, and we will talk about this later. Next. So what is say SEO organic search? As you can see, SEO is the process of optimizing everything related to the website visibility, to the content, the activity, with the aim of improving what we call in organic visibility. Organic visibility is everything in this space, out of this space. So this space, wherever you see paid or ad, sorry, it means it's a paid search on which there is a competition behind it based on a platform, based on an auction system related to keywords, and the rest is related to organic search. It means it is related to what Google evaluates through its algorithm to say that you deserve to be on this first position. Now, as you can see, there are different types of results. There are like text results. There are results related directly to questions. There are results that will be related to information, to like to Wikipedia. We will see that there are other results which are related to videos, to images, and so on. So the point of SEO is to be able of ensuring visibility on all these assets. Next. So the key differences, differences, sorry, as you can see, a lot of people may ask the question between SEM and SEO, or what is the difference between paid and organic is that, first of all, the organic, we, we have five or six key differences that we want to show here, but of course we can go on and on, but this is the main ones that we can focus on. When it comes to the scope for SEO, it's consultative, it's influencing websites and content through time. And for SEM, everything happens on an other plat platform that has specific features and starting from these features, you will be having results. The search results, we are talking about the organic results or rich listings. It means everything in the space, which is behind or starting from the fourth or the fifth position. And for SEM, everything is add label or add extension. There is no media buying cost directly. There is cost, but it's based on a project. It's based on content buying or content creation. However, for SEO, for SEM, it's a pay-per-click pay visibility. Anyone with a search intent, it means anyone who is looking for a product or using, looking for a keyword which is in your domain or in your field can have this, this visibility. And for SEM and uh, for uh, for SEM, you can target specific audiences, of course, in order to show your ad. The results, SEO is a project. There is you need to cover technical parts, content parts that we will explain later. However, it's immediate for SEM. And finally, long-term value. It's a sustainable SEO. It's a sustainable ranking earned over time because the fact that you are going from one position to another, it Google takes into consideration your authority, your visibility based on that, and you can stay there for a long time if, of course, you optimize, you continue optimizing. However, uh, for SEM, if you have, if it's funded, if there is paid media for it, you will be visible. If there is no paid media or no budget behind it, you will not be visible. Next one, please. So the, the shift in user search behaviors is really important to highlight here. Today, consumers exercise greater autonomy in their decision-making process because 
They want to compare, they, not, they want to check different resources before making any decisions. As you can see, 70% of consumers use three channels or more to research before finally making a purchase. I think this happened to all of us to check not one platform, not just Google, maybe only maybe Facebook, maybe YouTube, depending on the project, be, on the product, sorry, before making a decision. We have as many online consumers would rather watch a video, it's rather than a then read about it, which is for the watching of video or the search for video, it's four times more important than before. And it's true today, and we will show it later, that YouTube is no longer just a video platform, it's a search engine as well. Google's evaluation of websites based on expertise and authority makes it hard to win purely with the keyword focus strategy. It means you need to make sure that your strategy goes through a lot or more than just keyword, it needs to cover images, it needs to cover videos, it needs to cover content in order to ensure all um, the pillars or cover all the necessary pillars for, for SEO. So, and finally, for example, we have, as the SEO is getting more and more visible and more and more necessary, we have around more than 500,000 new websites created every day globally. Uh, for different domains, maybe sometimes there are sub websites or there are websites for that belong to bigger groups. But for Google, the Google algorithm see more SEO websites, more SEO sorry, uh, folks from from these websites created, and also there is more volume of these websites, which make the SEO the SEO part more competitive as well. Next, so as I said. As we said today, it's when we say SEO, it's not just Google, it's everywhere. So SEO is on search engines, like on marketplaces. SEO is on Google and SEO is on uh, YouTube as well. Today, all these platforms allow their algorithms to, to optimize based on the paid and the organic media. This was created by Google 20 years back, but today all the partners who has the ability to be a search engine are doing the same. So today brands are thinking not only about how to fund their paid investment, but also they are working towards their organic visibility. This organic visibility can be listings for marketplaces, it can be content for, for Google, and it can be video quality and video titles for YouTube, for example. Next. So this, this is just a snapshot on search engines around the world. We have thousands around the world, but these are the main ones. And as I said, we are seeing more and more. So Google was the first one, but we have Baidu in China, for example, Yandex, Yandex in, in Russia, Shopee, uh, Amazon, uh, Lazada, which are marketplaces, but now they are search engines as well. Pinterest that used to use to be and Facebook, which used, started as a social media, but today they are search engines. So, and in all of this, SEO counts and the algorithm and the search intent related to SEO, it means to organic, is more and more important for brands and for um, these platforms as well. Next. So the modern Google search landscape, as I said, SEO covers not only the simple results that we used to see before, but however, SEO is every day, is everywhere today. So we have the results which are related to the images that we see on the top. We have the results which are related to the query, to the exact query, which we see just after it. We have the results which are related to the questions, the results related to the videos and the results which are related to any, 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 let's say, paid action, for example, in case you are looking for a cinema a tickets or for something like that. Today, brands, they need to think of optimizing all of all these assets if they want to ensure a good organic visibility. Of course, the paid visibility plays a big role, and it's the first thing we see when we have uh, when we search for a query, but the organic is getting more and more interesting, covering more and more assets. And when you think, when you look to it very, very uh, closely, you see that SEO is everywhere. There is always a bit of the first part, which is paid, but the big part, which is non-paid and organic, that can be optimized. And we will explain to you how it works and how it can be optimized. And then now I will hand it to Viola to explain you the benefits of SEO. Thanks, Zen. Now that we have a brief idea of how SEO works, let us have a look on how SEO impacts different brands and the businesses uh, uh, that, that are out there. 
Uh, what you can see here on the slide is a brief snapshot of the consumer purchase cycle. We have the awareness phase, your consideration phase, your purchase phase, as well as your service phase. Uh, if you look at the different uh, icons that are there and the words that have been put out there, these are the different channels that brands target so that uh, they can improve their visibility in front of their audiences. So you'll see things like radio, your banners, your ads on search, uh, offline as well as online channels that brands use to uh, improve their visibility uh, to its customers. If you look at the icons that have been highlighted in red, uh, you can see channels like search, you have your blog, which is an asset, you have reviews, you have YouTube videos. Now, all of these icons in red are the ones uh, that SEO can actually impact. So as an SEO consultant, when you're looking at optimizing uh, different uh, aspects of uh, your, for your business, for different businesses, these are the different snapshots that you can target. And SEO is actually an integral part of every step of the consumer purchase cycle. Thus, whenever any business is, uh, is formulating a media plan or a marketing plan, uh, SEO should be part of a plan and it should not be done on a, on a one-time basis. It should be something that's an always on uh, marketing strategy because it targets different touch points and different stages of a consumer. And how does this impact different business metrics? Uh, Within the awareness phase, uh, SEO can actually have a huge impact on the visibility, on search impressions. Now, what are search impressions? Is basically the number of searches for which uh, your brand or business might be visible for. Uh, rankings is actually where you rank on search engines like Google. It can be page one, page two, page three, and so on. Visits is the traffic that you get via organic search onto your website. Uh, if you look at the engagement phase, the primary uh, objective of engagement when, it, when we talk about SEO is uh, ensuring that user experience is maintained on your website here. Uh, here, the objective should be increasing the time that users are spending on your website or reducing the drop-offs uh, that are happening, uh, happening uh, on your asset. And finally, when you look at conversions, uh, you're looking at uh, fulfilling and end intent. This can be improving the number of leads on your website or uh, increasing the number of sales that's happening. So when we talk about SEO, it impacts all three of these buckets. When you improve your organic rankings, it leads to more traffic, which in turn uh, leads to good content, uh, good engagement on your website. And finally, it leads to conversions. When you're talking about SEO strategy, it should not just be about driving traffic. It should be about driving relevant traffic. And that's the key here, uh, getting the right kind of traffic that's going to eventually convert. So how does SEO work? Before we go into the tactics, I think a key uh, important fundamental that, uh, that we need to know about is how search engines work in general. Uh, here, we'll specifically talk about Google because in Singapore, that's 95% of the market share. How Google works would be three, a basic framework with three basic points, crawl, index, and finally rank. Uh, what happens uh, when, a, when Google crawls your website? Crawl is basically coming onto your website and trying to read all the content that's there on your website and all the pages. Once it crawls through your website, imagine uh, that, that it's a spider, for example. So it's going to crawl your website. Once that's done, it stores the highly relevant content on pages as part of its index. Index is a kind of a storage for Google. And finally, whenever a user types in any kind of search query on Google, what Google does is browses, goes through its index and finds the most relevant content on your website page and shows it on Google search. Uh, you can draw an analogy uh, when, you're, when we are reading a book, for example, uh, we read through the book and there are some lines or words that you think and you memorize it because these, uh, these are words that you feel um, are good. You, you know, you, um, you tend to recall them quite often. And when you're talking to your colleagues, uh, okay, you think that, you know, whenever I can use this line, I can use this word, and that's when you throw it up and you use it as part of your vocabulary. Uh, it's exactly operates in the same manner. Now, uh, it's not that simple that, you know, you just uh, show in your content and rank, just create a website and leave it out there and let Google crawl. Now, Google uh, actually focuses a lot on relevancy or quality content, which is why uh, they have released um, a, a huge um, best practice guide where the 200 plus ranking factors that websites need to comply with in order to rank on Google search. Uh, but the end objective of Google is very, very simple. Whenever you create a website, whenever you create content, it needs to be really, uh, it needs to be accessible to users and it needs to add value to your users. 
if you fulfill these base basic criteria uh rest assured that your content is going to go viral on social media or people are going to start talking about it and that fulfills your end objective so whenever we are thinking about seo it's about trying to identify what these different guidelines are that google has put out there and trying our best to ensure that the website follows these best practices that have been laid down by google and what's more uh google has also from time to time released algorithm updates uh now these updates have two simple objectives number one how do we ensure that good websites rank better and number two how do we ensure that websites that are actually trying to spam google or are harmful are penalized and you know their rankings are brought down over the past few years google has released a lot of algorithms starting off with the panda update which is focused towards um uh, penalizing websites that have thin content in general the penguin uh, actually focuses on um, websites that might be trying to uh, manipulate google in a lot of illegal ways using by use of spammy techniques and off late we have been seeing uh, evolved technology being used by google algorithms for example bert which not just looks at just keywords but looks at topics in general and this is just going to evolve in future uh, earlier this year google announced that uh, they have now released uh, its new algorithm called as multitask unified model uh, it is much 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 stronger and a new milestone when we look at ai in general uh what it can do is uh, previously when a user had to do a search uh, if they had to type in 100 uh, queries to get an answer it's going to be so much stronger that google is just going to get the uh, uh, query replied in a single query for example uh, if if i have already hiked in um, say mount adams and i'm planning to do another hike at say mount fuji over the next few months uh instead of just uh, uh previously i had had to you know type in a lot of queries like what's the right gear what more should i uh, get is there any additional equipment that i need to buy for this hike what's how is it different from the hike that i did in mount adams but now you can just ha ask a single sim single question to google and and just uh, you know type in a query that says um uh, what additional things do i need to carry if i were to hike at mount fuji and google is going to throw up with all the answers this is how technology is going to develop and as an seo consultant it the primary role should be that you try and understand what are the different uh, uh, algorithmic changes what are the different things that you need to do on a website what is the change in technology that's going to come in in future and devise an seo strategy for the brands or businesses that you're working for uh now let's get started on uh what do we mean by seo the standard seo project looks like this uh the duration for which generally projects are run is at least 12 months the reason being there are a lot of changes that we need to do it's really consultative in nature which is why uh, there there are things like you need to do a keyword strategy you need to define your content you need to work on your user experience so this all of these changes take a lot of time and it's incremental in nature you you do some things might run in parallel some things might you might don't need to do it one after the other and by the time you actually start seeing results it's been it's it's almost like 3 to 4 months which is why uh people brands generally start with 12 months project and then uh this becomes part of their dna and they you know uh it becomes more of a ongoing project as such for most brands uh the key success metrics when you're looking at seo is uh driving quality traffic and improving the visibility in order to improve the overall conversions uh different stakeholders are involved when we are talking about seo uh because we need to look at different technical aspects of your website your development team is involved because you need to work on structuring your content so it's very very user centric your copywriting teams are involved you also work with different digital marketing teams and then of course the seo team who sits at the center of all of these uh there are a lot of deliverables uh, some base deliverables have been mentioned over here we'll talk about these in detail over the next few slides so this is the uh, approach a standard framework that we adopt at group m we call it the four c's approach to seo uh starting off at the bottom is the crawlability phase which is mainly focused towards managing the technical aspects of the website moving on is the content pillar which is about structuring content on the website that's in a way that we are targeting the right searches the third one is the credibility phase which is more focused about improving your presence on uh, on 
assets that might not be your website. Might be assets like say YouTube, like Zin mentioned, and it can also be different affiliate sites, your partner websites. And finally comes conversion, which is more about measuring and uh, improving uh, your overall uh, SEO strategy and uh, redefining any tactics that based on what works and what does not work. Starting off with crawlability. So this is a brief snapshot of how users might view your page versus how a spider might view your page. If you look at the first screenshot, this is how you might see a, you might see a website. There are images, there's a navigation, there are different videos in certain websites. But if you look at the screenshot on the right hand side, all that a spider can see is your code, the code in which your uh, website is written. Previously, historically, there have been a lot of technologies that Google was not able to crawl. For example, JavaScript. Over time, it's evolved with time. It has it has been able to crawl different technologies. But we need to know what's the right kind of technology and versus what's not. HTML is the most widely accepted framework and technology that most SEO users uh, recommend to their clients. And these are some of the broad pointers or broad snapshots of the different elements that can affect the crawlability of your website. We won't go into details into each one of these. And this is just a brief snapshot of the overview. There are over 50 parameters that you might want to analyze from a technical standpoint on websites. Um, but we'll go through the key uh, pointers that might affect crawlability in general. So the first thing is redirects. Uh, the most important one being a 301 redirect. Uh, it's very, very important. Uh, uh, in order to explain this better, suppose we visit a friend's house and uh, we knock on the door, but the door is closed and there's no one in the house. But you see a signboard on the house where it's mentioned that we do not live here anymore, but you can go to this address if you want to find us. The 301 redirect works in the exact same manner. If you implement it on your website, if you're, web, if you, if you're taking down a website and you delete a page on your website and you're replacing it with another page with similar content, you can implement a 301 redirect on that page. It, this will tell Google that we have moved. So now this is not the page that you're supposed to rank. You're supposed to rank the new page. And whenever a user like you and me enter and go on and log into that page, they are directed to the new page automatically. This is really, really critical and an important uh, recommendation from an SEO perspective to most brands whenever there are any kind of pages that are deleted from websites. The second one is sitemaps. Now, here we are going to talk about two types of sitemaps. The first one is the XML sitemap, and the second one is the HTML sitemap. The XML sitemap is specifically for search engines, and the HTML sitemap is for users. Uh, if you're talking about sitemaps, it's very similar to a directory. Suppose I want to find a restaurant in Singapore, and I just uh, go and look at the map. I'm someone who's new. Go and look at the map or go and look at Google Maps and try and find restaurants in Singapore. I might find one in Bogus, one in Orchard, and so on. So this is exactly similar. It basically is a directory that lists all the pages on your website. The formats that we use for both the sitemaps are different. For Google, it basically tells you that these are the different pages that you need to crawl. And whereas for an HTML, and this is something that's not visible to users. Whereas for users, it gives you a brief web directory of all the links uh, that you might find on the different sections on your website. The overall need for this is that it improves your overall indexation rates and it helps gain visibility for a lot of pages that might otherwise have been undiscovered had they not been listed out there. The third part is page speed. Now this one is really, really important. And over the past two years, what Google has done is added page speed as part of its ranking factors. Mobile being a lot more important than desktop these days. Uh, normally, uh, the threshold for good websites is that brands generally try and maintain a page speed of more than 60 plus. Uh, so that's something that you do, but you need to look at industry benchmarks and relative uh, benchmarks uh, when you're talking about page speed. And all, of course, the e-commerce websites, because of the quantity of pages on the website, tend to have a much lower page speed than the others. Uh, this is especially important because now it's become a ranking factor and there are different technical uh, 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 recommendations that you can implement. For example, minimizing uh, JavaScript or reduce compressing images. 
that can improve the overall web, web page. And this is, of course, important to users as well, because uh, if we try and open a site and it does not open, we are likely to bounce off. So that's going to impact your overall end conversions. With this, I'll hand it over to Zin to take you through the next part, content. Thank you, Viola. So once we have optimized our uh, crawlability or our site website is crawled, we need to ensure that the content is well optimized. The content is a big part of the SEO. Uh, next one, please. Content is in the heart of SEO optimization for two reasons, because we have two types of content. We have the content which is on-site, that we call it on-site content, and we have con content that which is off-site. It means that it's coming from other partners uh, and other affiliates that we call it off-site content. Um, what, how, how a content strategy and optimization framework should be working. We have four main steps in preparing our content strategy. First of all, it's the discovery. It means what is my objective? What are the platforms? What are the type of keyword research that I'm looking for in order to put in place a good plan to grasp all the potential keywords which are part of my business? The second part is the analysis. It means, does it worth to go after all the keywords? Does it go worth to go after all the keywords where everyone is better ranked than me? Or it's better to make a mix between uh, key, new keywords or um, less searched keywords, and I will explain it in the next in the in the next slide, in order to have a differentiator with competitors. The third the third one is the planning. It means what are what type of content will engage our audience? What content? should we create and also with who should be creating and finally optimization optimization as viola mentioned before it's not enough to just have a website to create a content and to leave it live there you need always to be sure that your content is seo friendly that you are respecting all the seo uh, recommendations whether in the length of the content in the type of the titles and the keywords used on the different steps in on the technical on the technical side as well to ensure that your content will be visible next so when we look for when when we look for content for example uh, as you as you can you can see everyone will have in mind to be just visible on the top uh, or on the most searched keywords of course it's a good thing to be on the on the most searched to be visible on the most searched keywords but also it's important to think about the long tail for many reasons First of all, it's to be visible on all. It allows your audience to discover all what you are able to offer. Secondly, it allows you to diversify your content strategy. Third, it allows you to give you a bit of, competitive, of competitiveness in front of your competitors. Let's say that you are a new uh, website dedicated to decoration and you are launching your website and you will be against, for example, IKEA or any big brand in, in when it comes to these to the main terms related to I don't know so uh, relates to sofas to beds to to bed sheets or whatever. So how can we look for the keywords that may be related on the long tail for people who are looking for specific uh, services for specific colors for specific topics for specific trends in order to explore what we call a long tail. Of course, if you can see, eighteen percent of of the keywords are related to what we call head keywords and 12% to body keywords, but we have 70% of long keywords which are related to the search traffic. So how can we ensure visibility in a balanced way across all the journey to ensure that we will have a better conversion rate? Next. So what does it mean? It means that we need to be present for any SEO strategy related to content. You need to be present on the different stages. From awareness, it means in the moment where you are just looking for the information, you still even didn't make any decision about the topic that you are looking for. The second one is the consideration. It means you, you are thinking about it, but you still didn't decide. And the third one is, uh, is the conversion. It means you have thought about it, you decided, and now you are going for the action. So in the three different steps, you have different type of content. So for the first one, the content may be, for example, comparative. If someone is looking for the different types of car to buy in Singapore, which one is the best one, for example, in terms of cost and efficiency. In the second one, in the consideration, it will be written specifically for 
uh, for categories or for specific kind of, of audiences. For example, uh, a specific, you will, you, you, in your content, you can explain uh, the important, the, the cars which will be suitable for families, the cars which will be suitable for big families, for small families, for someone who lives in the center, for someone who lives far from the center and so on. And the final one, it's simply what are the elements that I need before I buy a car? And what, once I have all the information, what should I do to make the final action? So having covered, when, when we cover all these points, we will come back, it comes back to what I have explained before to be present on the long tail, on the body and on the main keywords. Next. Another important point of the content is the competitive analysis. There is a very basic SEO optimization that all the brands do it, whether big brands or small brands, it's to check what the competition is doing to identify what we call gaps in content. So today, from technical point of view, we have tools that allow us to identify uh, keywords or search expressions on which we are not present or we are not ranked. There is a big difference. You can have a content on your website, but it's not ranked. Why it's not ranked? Because it's not readable or crawlable by Google. It's important. Having a content, it's not enough. Having a content which is visible from Google is the most important. So the first one is to identify what is your gap with your uh, with your um, competitor and what how can we explore this gap? The second one is, of course, to identify the highly ranked competitor content and which with, with which uh, partners they are working with. And it's, as I said, it's one of the most basic optimizations, but all brands do it. And finally, social media. Social media is a great resource of content as it's a content which is created very often from posting to comments, to updates of the products and so on. Before it didn't used to impact SEO much today. It's part of the content from the offsite content. So when we respect the SEO conditions related to the keywords, related to the to the type of expressions that we use when we describe a specific product, relates to the images, relates to the links that we'll send to the product, to the product, sorry. All this will help us to have a, to have a better content and a better impact on our content. What, what does it mean? It means this will, uh, that means our ranking will be positively impacted in this, uh, or positively evolving on this specific keyword. Next or keywords. So the content that we design is needs to be a content which is really uh, uh, for our consumers. When we are a brand, we know what our consumers are looking for because we have a lot of touch points from which we are collecting information. So we are collecting information from our paid ads. We are collecting information from the type of audiences which are visiting our website. We are collecting our information from tools intelligence because as, as we mentioned before, every day, according to Google, there, we, there are 15% of the keywords or the new searched keywords are keywords that was not searched before. You imagine 15%, it's a big amount of keywords that every day users use it. So how can I leverage on these new keywords in order to be sure uh, that I will not miss this opportunity or to be present for a trendy keyword, especially for a launch of a, of a, of a product or for launch of, of a specific trend or, or, or and so on. So everything related to blogs, to FAQs, to tips, to videos, to infographics, all this will make your content easy to discover, easy to read and so on. Because what we need to know about the content as well, a lot of people do not like to spend too much reading. So it's important to make your content accessible and easy to read and infographics and videos and reviews and tips will make it easier. Next. Then we, we have talked earlier about the on-page uh, crawlability, or let's say how the page can be crawl, uh, crawl, crawled in general. There are a lot of factors, but here we want just to highlight some of them. A big part of SEO, or let's say 30%, 25 to 30% of an SEO project is a technical part. When we say technical, it means we need to optimize a lot of elements that Viola mentioned before to make your website again, visible for Google, because it's important that the crawlers of Google will be able to translate the query, uh, which was typed by, by a, a consumer to an information from your website. So when 
when when we when we use that, we need to be sure in our content that we are covering the elements that uh, that are mentioned before. It means that our title tags should take into consideration the necessary keywords which are related to specific queries. It means if I am looking for, I don't know, uh, black shoes, I don't want to put a content which is related, for example, to a brown shoes. The description tag, that means all are the tags that allow us to add a description should be properly describing the product because that's the crawler what they look for. The headings and the subheadings, it's simply, it's, it's let's say the technical part of the website, but simply what can I put in my header and my subheader that will reflect the product or that will give extra information. The content is the main content. The internal linking is the links which are within the website. It's an important part of, uh, for Google's algorithm as well. The image ALT and file names, ALT text, sorry, sorry if it's a bit technical, but it's simply an element that allows Google to be able to read an image. It's like an identifier for every image. And as you have seen before, even for images, we have, uh, we have a ranking, we have an organic ranking. So if we have the possibility to show our results through images, why not? And finally, the schema tags. The schema tags is a tag which is added in order to add information related to the product. As I said, as um, Viola explained earlier for for, the, for example, when you are going to a city and you don't know it and you want to discover it and you need a map to do it. So it's kind of giving a map to the crawlers to find the right information in the right way, the fastest possible in order to allow us to be visible on the results. Next. So how does, uh, it's important to show how does uh, an optimized search snippet look like Another click, I think. Yeah, thank you, Viola. So the first one reflects a very bad example. I'm sure that all of you, we have seen this before. It means it's a, a search result that have only a very uh, low description or no description at all for this query. So it doesn't necessarily gives me uh, a motive to, to click on it. However, the second one, where we have a proper title, we have a proper image, we have a review, and we have short description, I already have a lot of information. And from this, I will know, do I want to go with this or not? So having a good description, a good title, a good image, and good review will increase your CTR. Increasing your CTR in Google's point of view will increase, increase your authority because simply, simply when people are looking for, let's say, the best food in Singapore, you are showing the content related to best food. And every time there is one clicking to discover the content, Google will consider that you are reliable and credible on this part and that will push your ranking forward. Next one, please. And now we will talk about credibility. It's important to, <clears throat> a next one, Viola, please. It's important to have credibility uh, where, for your website and for your content. And it's important to take into consideration a lot of elements. Of course, a lot of them technical, but we will try to, to keep it simple. So first of all, it's to work with qualitative partners. You don't want to work with partners uh, which, which are not qualitative or, ha or have a bit of uh, a non-optimized content to send your traffic. From Google's point of view, this is not good. Uh, secondly, as I said, to explore all the social signals and shares available today, social media is a great resource of content. So how can I use this in a positive way to have a good impact on my image? Third one, it's to ensure that the, the website link distribution is correct and to, to ensure that all my links lead somewhere. Any link, any link that will uh, lead to a dead end or to a broken link is a bad user experience. It's a minus from Google and it's a minus from a consumer as well because you will not trust a, a website on which you don't have the right information. Digital asset optimi optimization needs to be uh, it's to be able to uh, optimize all the signals available. And finally, news and media press releases that allows you to have a better visibility. Generally, this kind of news, this kind of releases has a very high authority, gives you credit people will share, people will spend time to read about what you are doing. And the more spent time it is, the better it is for your, for your, uh, for your image and for your ranking impact. Remember at the end of the day, it's a war on, on visibility, a war on ranking. 
And the more you respect the rules, the more you are credible, the better it is in Google's eyes. Next, <clears throat> or in all search engines, not just Google. Then we have the backlink profile and authoritative links. I was, say, I was talking about uh, what is uh, uh, partners to work with. So what is backlink? A backlink is simply a link uh, that are coming from other websites to our website. And in Google's eyes, this is something that we call a vote of popularity. It means that when, uh, let's say, for example, I'm looking for, again, let's talk about cars, for the most uh, competitive cars in Singapore from pricing point of view, I arrive on a blog on which, or on an article that explains the different brands, and then this blog sends uh, sends a link to me in order to discover and to discover more content about it. So when it happens once, twice, three times, and people will find their final destination in our website, Google will give us a vote and consider this backlink as an author as a good uh, a good partner and allow us to have a better visibility. A quality backlinks, of course, it's backlinks that have a good trust score. From we have a lot of tools that allow us to identify trust stores and all trust score sorry and 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 websites of uh, authority referring domains it means the unique domains that provide backlinks to your website it's simply the links which are sent to your website and the domain authority uh, as i said it's a metric that we use in seo that allows us to see mm, this website really have strong authority from google's point of view it's especially big website if we take for example in singapore channel asia, asia or straight times or any other or any other uh, kind of websites or bcc or, or bbc news or whatever all these uh, guys have a good authority and working with them allow us to gain audience and to gain credibility next so backlink from affiliate and partners that's how it looks like i'm sure that in your experience before you have been discovering uh, you have seen uh, links like that it's generally links which are inside uh, a blog or inside an article that allows to send the traffic towards the main uh, website and this allows you simply to extend the uh, the customer journey and extend the visibility for the partner which is better because you are getting new votes and but by getting new votes you will get uh, a better visibility and better ranking again as i said the most important point is to be visible on as much keywords as possible of course related to your business next then we will talk about uh, the conversion uh, of course for all brands for any uh, activation that we propose or we suggest they always want to look why I am doing it. And at the end of the day, whoever brand we are, we want to convert. Of course, conversion can mean sale, can mean generate a lead, can mean a contact, can mean a, a visit on a specific website, but we need an action. It's a concrete action. So for that, we have, a, let's say, a tech stack that we have in place in analytics and reporting that allows us to see the evolution of the different steps to arrive to this conversion. First of all, it's to have a keyword and category ranking in different market search engines to see which opportunities should we follow and what can be optimized. Uh, secondly, it's to analyze the organic uh, visits of our website and the growth of organic visibility. The third point, which is sites, what we call site-centric, it's really important from Google point of view in order to see the pages viewed per session, the time spent on site and the bounce rate. The bounce rate is a very negative from Google point of view. If you are losing 50% of your uh, or the, of your audience when they arrive on your website, it means there is a problem. Uh, and of course, finally, we have the macro and the micro convergence, which are related to what I have explained before, a registration, a property search, and so on. And what was the part participation of, of the organic uh, channel on this one? Generally, it, the organic research, they have better impact because when we do uh, a research and when we look for specific, when we click on organic results, we are not influenced by an ad. We are interested by a specific topic that we have mentioned in our, in our search query. And if we find the right information, we generally, or any consumer goes till the, the last step. Next. So how long does it take for SEO to show results? We said before, SEO is a project that needs to be worked on a long time 
generally it's in on one year time but of course we have small victories uh when we start working on the seo of course uh the it's we we have a lot of number of change or client actions uh that may delay us because a lot of parts a lot of parts of seo are technical if we ask a client to implement a specific change on specific pages from the back end and the client will come back to us after one month this delays our action for one month but let's say for every action what we do technically speaking it takes two to three weeks sometimes four weeks when there are a lot there is a lot of competition to show results other than that, it, and SEO is incremental. It shows always incremental results because the, be, the more time you are credible, the more time you have good visibility, the better it is in, in, in Google eyes. So it's always important to keep in mind that when you are doing SEO, you think from a project point of view and not thinking from a paid campaign point of view and you optimize your campaign based on this project by following, of course, the KPIs uh and by following uh, the different uh, let's say the different metrics you have agreed with your client on and i will hand it over to viola to um to recap yeah so what do we think uh, is the future of seo going to look like it's pretty simple from what we have seen uh, consumer trends change uh, google changes its algorithm accordingly a search landscape changes and finally seo has to evolve based on the consumer and google's algorithm uh, some emerging consumer trends that we have been seeing of late, mobile and videos are on a rise, especially in Asia and the APAC region in general. Most 50% of global app installs happen within APAC and most usage is uh, within these markets. There are, there are a lot of technologies, evolving technologies being used to provide a seamless user experience for users like progressive web apps. And these are something uh, that's, that's upcoming. And uh, as an SEO consultant, it's very, very important that we stay up to date on these evolving technologies and ensure that whatever technology is being used is something that, that can be made accessible to Google. The second important thing is customer experience. This is going to be a huge priority. Uh, Google has already announced a change this year because uh, which uh, that says that customer experience is going to be the key in this algorithm as well. And why is this the case? It's because APAC consumers and consumers globally are acting in this manner. Consumer touch points are no longer just limited to search. Uh, people are making decisions by use of social platforms, messaging apps, commerce platforms like Amazon as well. So it's really huge and makes sense for Google as well to evolve its algorithm based on this change in search behavior that's there. And finally, voice search is growing and it's growing at a tremendous rate in APAC. Uh, people are using different devices uh, to find more information. And this is something that, that should be um, looked look at uh, in future as well. And how is SEO going to evolve uh, based on uh, some industry trends and insights and from industry leaders? What we know is that SEO priorities will shift based on upcoming social updates. And these updates are going to be huge. Uh, I previously spoke about the MUM technology and with these, uh, with AI being a lot more into focus, SEO would have to shift in this direction as well. Uh, UX would be more important than ever. Page speed is something that's already been taken into account, but this might change uh, to look at how much traffic is actually leading to conversions and are users staying onto your website and are, is the content on your website engaging enough. Uh, SEO was treated more like a hygiene option over the past few years. Now businesses view it as an ROI generating platform. All businesses expect ROI and are investing a lot of money in SEO and expect tremendous results. 60% of most sales happen from SEO and uh, brands have realized this. Brands want to expand and improve the percentage con uh, of uh, ROI that they get from this channel specifically. How has Google algorithm evolved? There are, these are some key updates that have already happened and a lot more to come. Uh, the emphasis is on expertise, your, how, ex, uh, how, how much, how authoritative is your website? Is your website trustworthy? And does it provide the right kind of expert advice to its customers? This is going to be very, very critical from an SEO standpoint. The second one, BERT technology, which is focused towards topics in general and not just keywords. Evolving the SEO strategy in a way that we are looking at, uh, looking at it in a very, very holistic manner is important. And finally, page experience. The page experience update already 
focuses on a lot of new ranking factors like core web vitals. Now, this is only going to expand in the future. Things to watch out for, transformation of SEO by use of AI technology. There are already a lot of tools out there uh, gearing up to evolve with Google's change in algorithms. Uh, keyword research is no longer simple manual keyword research. There are al already researchers which use AI technology to understand different trends, patterns of search behavior by users, and accordingly, uh, strategies are formulated uh, to target them on the website. Content marketing is huge. What kind of content converts a lot more? How do users behave on your website? What, how, how are they consuming the content on your website? Understanding different trends, driving predictive models, and defining content accordingly has become more and more important. Finally, the searches that are happening on various devices and not just on search. How do we interpret it, convert it into something usable, and use it as part of the web optimization strategy? Another key uh, feature channel to watch out for is YouTube. YouTube optimization is going to be a rise along with website optimization. 62% of Google search results already have at least one video. And 80% of them are from YouTube because it's Google's partner. So it's very, very important that uh, SEO consultants also look at optimizing this channel as a whole and try and understand uh, the kind of searches that people might be using within YouTube so that your brands and the videos uh, uploaded by your ads rank better within the search engine itself. Finally, conversion rate optimization, which is important because of uh, the user experience part of change. Um, understanding what the user journey is on the website. What are the different drop-off points? What are the different exit points? What are the things that affect overall conversions? And accordingly making changes to your site, uh, it can be aesthetic changes, design changes, as well as content changes, so that uh, your end conversions increase, so that people coming onto your website find that your content is relevant enough in order to come to a, uh, and, and you know convert on your website. Driving more ROI for the brand, uh, this is going to be a huge area that businesses are going to start investing a lot more on along with just basic SEO. Thanks a lot. We hope that you found this uh, session to be really useful. Um, be uh, handing it over to Celestine now. Before the session ends, please scan the QR code and provide your feedback or comments on the webinar. And lastly, I would like to share with you about our skills and training advisory service. If you're not sure how to get started on your upskilling journey, you can sign up for the free one-to-one -one skills and training advisory session where a skills ambassador will guide you in understanding your career goals and provide suitable course recommendations. Kindly scan on the QR code and indicate SFMX Smart Nation in a mandatory field, how do you hear about us, at the bottom of the registration form. Our skills ambassadors will contact you within two to three working days. We have come to the end of the webinar and we thank you for joining us. Hope you have gained important insights from our speaker. Thank you and hope to see you in our other sessions.